Having casters or wheels on your outboard engine stand just makes good sense. And I can't believe I originally built this one without any wheels on it. And I've been using it for over a year before I finally put them on today. Let's talk about putting casters or wheels on your outboard engine stand today. When I made this engine stand last year, I didn't put any wheels or casters on it. I was trying to build one as cheaply as possible because I literally was making this stand out of scrap wood that I had around here and scrap hardware. I didn't have any casters or wheels that would work for this because I was trying to make a zero dollar engine stand. I have a link to this video if you want to see it. I'll put it up top here. So what we're doing is we're putting some wheels on this. Now, for some of you guys who know how to do a lot of stuff, this is way below your skill level. And you're going to look at this and you're going to make comments like, this is a no-brainer. Anybody knows how to do this. Why don't you know how to do this sort of stuff? The reality is not everybody knows how to do this. And this video is for you if you don't know how to do this or you don't know what wheels you should use or how you should do it. I've learned a little bit in the last couple years. I'm going to share that. We're going to try the wheels that I bought and I'm going to show you some other options. And we're going to see if they work because ultimately I'm going to be putting a lot heavier engine on this stand and I need it to be able to hold up and be able to move around easily. When I built my very first engine stand, I wanted to put some wheels on it and I was looking around with what I had and in my basement I had these. So these are some good looking heavy duty wheels right here. See, they're like, what are they, maybe three or four inches? and uh, they swivel 360 degrees. There's ball bearings. Uh, two of them actually are locking. But you see this part right here? They're only held in with this one little stud right here. And this part is a nut that threads in and it has things to, to bite in there. But basically this is meant to go into something metal, something heavy duty to hold these wheels in. This is not for wood. And I found this out the hard way because I drilled holes in another stand and uh, chiseled it out and I put nuts on here and I had these mounted on a stand and when I flipped the stand over, gave it a little bit of a wiggle, literally these just ripped right out immediately. So these are not the wheels that you want. The types of wheels that you want are ones with this flat base, like this. Because if they have this flat base, that matches up with the bottom of your two by four. But of course, these are all not created equal either. So these ones here, I think are about two and a half inches. They rotate 360 degrees. They're non-locking, they're probably polyurethane, and they have this steel base that screws into here. I got these at my local hardware store. After I bought them, I actually was looking around online. Amazon actually has some, I think, nicer sets that are less money than these. They're bigger, more heavy duty. They're double locking each wheel, so you have a way to unlock it and lock it easily with the foot, some kind of double locking mechanism. They're a slightly larger wheel than this, so I have a link to those in the video description, and I think they're pretty cool. And you need to buy good ones because really cheap ones will fail or fall apart like those. They might not roll over uneven surfaces or whatever. So it's up to you whether you want ones that are locking or 360 degree rotating. With the first engine stand I built, I actually I bought two that rotated and two that were fixed. So you can get fixed wheels that are like this, and this part does not rotate. This card actually has two fixed wheels and two rotating wheels. And I thought that's what I wanted, so that way it wouldn't be awkward to move around. But it was awkward to move around, because those two fixed wheels and the two rotating wheels, I always seemed to have it a little wrong, and I had to kind of scissor it in and out of places a lot of times, especially if you're keeping it in a tight spot. That's why I'm looking over there because that's where I keep it. And that's a tight spot for it a lot of times because I have too much other junk in the garage. 
So this time I opted for all four of them to be 360 degree rotating. You also want to make sure the plate isn't any larger than your 2x4 or 2x6 or whatever your base is. Now because I built with 2x4s, my base is actually three and a half inches wide. The casters that I put a link to in the video description, their base is two and a half inches wide, just like these ones are here. So they would fit on there perfectly. So we've established that we need these ones with a flat bolt-in base. And we want to be able to screw them directly to our 2x4 or 2x6. And obviously we're going to put them on all four corners. It doesn't matter if they're perfectly square or anything like that. We're going to try to have them perfectly square. But one thing that does matter is how you bolt these down. With nuts and bolts, it's important to use the right kind of hardware. However, in certain situations, you can get away with other things. For example, these are drywall screws right here. So I'm thinking I might be able to use a drywall screw. However, a drywall screw falls right through here. So now I'm going to need a washer to be able to make this work. So here's a drywall screw with a washer on it. And as you see, that doesn't fall through. So that's one option. I also have some other bolts that I found. Uh, this one here is a, uh, I think this is stainless steel. This might be left over from one of my other uh, boat projects. This one also will need to use a washer. I don't know if I've got 16 of these though, so what I might do is a little combination. Maybe I'll do uh, a couple of different screws in a couple of different spots. So one of the first things we want to do is mark our holes. So we center this in the space. And let's mark our mounting points. for the first one. And what we need to do now is drill a pilot hole and use a drill bit that's very similar in size to your screw threads. So see how this is pretty similar? And what we're going to do is we're only going to drill in a little bit just to be able to allow the screw to get started. And we change out our bit, put in a screwdriver bit. I'm very old fashioned. I usually like to start screws by hand, but I'll just, uh, I'll just put this in. So now we just do the same thing on the other three corners. So there we go. This is a whole lot better than it was. I can roll it around. I can obviously put a much heavier outboard motor on here and be able to move it around in my garage to be able to work on it. I didn't get the locking wheels. Would you have done that? Would you have gotten ones with locks on them? What would you do differently than this? Would you have two fixed wheels and two spinning wheels or four lockable ones? Let me know in the comments below. 
Well, that's it for this video. Here's another video you should be watching next. It's a good one. Sure to check it out.